Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. And before we get to our guest today, we have a big shout out for, for Living Sisu. Living Sisu is a platform and app that wants to give you all the tools to have success in your sport. Their main objective is to activate your lifestyle. So for active, it's for active people. Enjoy discounts at, at companies like BioSteel, 30% off, Body Logics, The Goalie Guild, all his books are discounted. Roan, Lululemon for men. 20% off online stretching programs with eccentrics, one full month free. They got super silent massage guns, 20% off those. And it's a great quality. It's way less expensive than a Theragun. And it's a great, it's great quality. So there's so many more discounts that you guys will need to just become a member to see. So they want to provide you with anything you need for success. So come join the community. I'm a part of it. A bunch of other athletes are a part of it, so it's free to join. It takes 20 seconds to have to get exclusive offers to your sport, and it's definitely worth worth it. So, do do us a huge favor and go sign up for Living Sisu's membership. It's free, 20 takes 20 seconds, so go do it, and we'll see you there. Living Sisu is a great company. We uh we know one of the co-founders, Zach Fricali. He's a great guy. He uh. He's the co-founder. He does a lot of live streams on Instagram at uh, at Living Sisu, and with a bunch of elite athletes. And you learn a lot from like the athletes' determination, the resiliency, everything to what me made them become successful. So it's been a great experience so far. So go on. I'm gonna leave uh, the link in the description. So uh, go sign up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. I'm Jack, and in today's episode, we are joined by a very special guest, current college baseball player, Dylan Hoy. Dylan currently is an infielder at Marist College and is a sophomore. He played high school ball in Suffern, New York, before going to play college ball. So, excited to have you on, Dylan. So, welcome to the show, Dylan Hoy. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. How's everything going? Yeah, no, no problem. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be fun getting you on, but other than that, like, it's been good. Just staying safe, staying healthy, trying to get the work in as much as I can with the uh, limited, limited capacity stuff, and just working on my home gym. So that's basically all I've been doing. How about you, dude? I've just been uh, getting my work in. Everybody's staying safe, um, so I can't complain about that. I kind of been doing a combo of going to the facility in the morning. It's been pretty quiet. So I'm able to get there and then just kind of combining my work at nighttime by myself. So, but it's all going well. Yeah, that that's at least good. And like everyone's staying safe. So that's, that's the most important part there. So like, what, what have you been doing for like training wise and just putting in some of the work you've been doing over the, over like these weird times with COVID? Yeah. Yeah. So when COVID first started, I was actually limited on what I had because, you know, nobody expected this to happen. So yeah. I was just going to the facility or the gym every day. Um, so I was doing a lot of body weight exercises, you know, hitting into the net. Um, but over the period, like throughout the past couple of months, we recently got a home gym. So I'm able to lift there. Um, luckily, now there are facilities open that I train at, uh, Powell Arm and Ramsey. I lift there in the morning times, do some hitting and everything. And then I'll usually come home and get my fielding around at the field or I usually have a brick wall that I kind of go to and that's pretty much it honestly just a combination of those two yeah for sure it's so like <coughs> what what was it like uh before like COVID and all that hit and just like what like with baseball and everything at Marist like what was happening before that and before like all the shutdowns and everything yeah so I was obviously a freshman last year so it was my first fall um, going into it, it was actually a really packed schedule. We would have like 6 a.m. lifts three days a week. Um, I would have two to three classes right after lift. And then after that would be followed by another practice, our team practice. So I would really be packed from about like 5.30 in the morning to about, I'd say, 3 in the afternoon. So then I would finally have a time to kind of chill out, relax, and then we would have a night class and then basically do it all over again. Um, so that was really like a whole day at Marist. We would usually have, you know, lifts in the morning, then team practice. And we'd have a lot of scrimmages as well, which is awesome because, you know, we didn't have to worry about um, social distancing and all that. 
Um, last fall, we were lucky enough to have a scrimmage. We went over to Cooperstown, New York, against Holy Cross. Um, so we played them. And now, unfortunately, this past fall, we couldn't really do any scrimmaging against other teams. So we did a little bit of inner squatting, um, a few, not too many team practices because we were up and down throughout the year. Um, but we did get some quality work in. Yeah, for sure. So before we dive <laughs> deeper into, into that stuff, like, can you give our viewers a little back on information on yourself? Like when you started playing baseball, like who inspired you to play and like some of your favorite players and growing up in yeah. New York and through like youth ball and all that? Definitely, dude. Um, so I started playing, I think the first time I picked up a bat, I was like two years old. And it was a little wiffle ball bat, you know, swinging off the tee with a few wiffle balls in the basement. Um, I actually have a few videos of it. It's pretty funny. Um, but I started to play competitively, I would say around f- six years old. I skipped T-ball. I went right into uh, whatever, the rookies or whatever they call it. Um, but my parents actually signed me up. I didn't really want to play any specific sport, but I wanted to do something. So they signed me up for basketball and baseball. So I started playing that. And around like 10 or 12 years old, I fell in love with baseball and I stuck with that. I stopped playing basketball. And ever since then, I kind of, obviously you grow up, I'm an infielder, like you said before, primarily a shortstop. So you grow up watching Derek Jeter. Um, my favorite player is actually Trevor Story and for the Rockies, Beast. Um, but after watching them and kind of, just getting more into baseball, learning about it, I realized, like, I actually want to do this. Like, I want to try to make it. So I just worked out every day, did little bits to get better. And luckily, I landed myself a scholarship with Maris to play there. And that's really how it's gone so far. Just every day doing a little bit of work, enjoying it. Um, But, yeah. Yeah, that's unreal. And you got to enjoy it, like – if you if you're not enjoying it, then why why are you playing? Like definitely, and I feel I feel like I kind of took it not took it for granted, but I kind of expected it to be there each year baseball like competitively. And after going through COVID and getting our season taken away, it's like wow, you don't realize how much you love it until it's not gone, but it's not you know yeah you're not playing it <laughs> yeah exactly. And it's just you never would have thought that like you could go like a season will just be taken from you just like that, and like you it definitely brings like brings like hardships and like all that. And like, you, you really want to get back out there, but like you obviously can't because like all the, all the restrictions and all that. And like the season with the school and everything, but like, it's definitely, it's definitely hard, especially when you lose that season or can't even play that sport for a good, what, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. eight months, whatever it is. It's crazy. And it's just, it just, teaches you how much how valuable it is and how much value like life is and like just enjoying every moment you can get while playing the sport you love yeah definitely I mean we we only played 12 games and we were supposed to play like 59 so it was just (laughs) plus a whole summer ball so it's like it's just unreal yeah for sure so uh, going into uh, like youth ball a little bit like what what were some of the things that like you would do to like help yourself work out like when you did like commit to baseball at the age of 12 11 or 12 I think you said what like what would you do like on a daily basis to try to help you get to that that next level each and every day yeah so honestly I would I would have school but usually after school every day I would I wouldn't really be working out at that time like lifting weights so I'd usually go on my runs and then I'll go to the field every day with my either my dad or a bunch of my buddies um, but we'd hold each other accountable for it, like to make sure we went every day. Um, we would just hit for hours. We would field for hours until the sun went down. Um, sometimes we were lucky enough to get the lights on the field. So, <laughs> you know, we would be there all night, but we would really just every day, just try to better each other and make sure that we would get after it. Yeah, there was no specific routine. Yeah. I mean, there was no specific routine that I had young, at a young age. I kind of developed that more so last year um but i would just basically make sure i was out there all the time yeah for sure that, yeah exactly that's that's great that <coughs> just out there just getting like just hitting and fielding like those are some of the most important things about playing about baseball is just getting down getting that thing getting those things down 
and everything. And then, like, you grew up in New York. So w- did you go to Cooperstown a lot to play when you're in Little League? So that's a funny story. I never went to Ripken or Cooperstown or everything. So I stopped playing Little League a year earlier. <clears throat> so I was actually – what did I do? I played my age group eight to like 10 years old. And then that like minor league, the last three years that you're supposed to have, I only played one year. And then I went right to middle school baseball. So I kind of got cut short where I wasn't able to play. Um, I definitely would have liked to because I heard great stories about it, but I never got the chance to play there, unfortunately. Yeah, that, that would have been a cool experience to, uh, to be at and just because all there's a bunch of cool stories that come from Cooperstown just the mm-hmm. just playing at that field too and so like yeah then you go on a like middle school ball like what was middle school baseball like and just yes yeah, so just that was, out that yeah so middle school baseball was actually awesome so surprisingly where I live suffer New York my grade we had a very competitive baseball grid I think there was about 20 to 25 kids who actually like stuck to it and played on a regular basis, played in a bunch of travel leagues. So our grade was hard to get on. And I was lucky enough to make it my first year of middle school, the team. So we could, we're able to play. We have sixth, seventh, and eighth grade for our middle school. Uh, we're able to start playing seventh grade into eighth grade. So I was lucky enough to make it my seventh grade year and be a starter actually at third base because um, I was a third baseman at that point. So I started my seventh grade year. We did pretty well. I think we lost like five games. We were like five and five. And then my eighth grade year, we went undefeated. And that was kind of our whole grade up into high school. We kind of stayed with each other. And I was still a third baseman in eighth grade. And once I was done with middle school, I transitioned to shortstop. Because that's when I saw Trevor Story. I was like, I want to play short. (laughs) I want to move like him. So that kind of inspired me to move. Yeah, so what – what like besides that like what were some of the things that you had to learn at from being from going to third base to shortstop and just because it it's quite a bit different of a game from third base a little bit there so like what mm-hmm. what, what what did you have to learn about being a shortstop compared to what you were at third base yeah so honestly so besides learning about the basics just the natural positioning being different I kind of wanted to take more of a leadership role be more vocal um, talk to my players more, kind of see things with the hitters, move players around. So I felt like at shortstop, it's known to be a captain of the field, like short and center. Those are your two captains of the field and obviously a catcher. But I wanted to really get that down. And I felt like I had that down pretty well. So then I started to learn about different angles. I, I had to move better on my feet, move better left, uh, move better right, have better range and arm strength. So once I built all that up, I built my confidence and I felt like I was ready to go. Yeah. So how much, how big is confidence, especially at a short, at shortstop when you're like the the captain, like you said, it's like, what would you have to do to help yourself get better? Like move side to side movements, like all that and just put when you were starting to work out and starting to be short or shortstop be your main position, like what would you do to help gain that captaincy? Yeah. So honestly, I feel like, confidence is key in not only baseball but every sport and in life itself I feel like if you don't have confidence you're you're really going to fail because you're not trusting yourself you know what I mean I know that's kind of sounds kind of deep but (laughs) it's kind of the truth it is Um, once I started to trust myself I started to go outside the box I would start to create different movements start to go for balls start to dive for balls that I would usually let pass me because I had that mindset of oh I could do that you know you know what I mean yeah and it's just a whole different feeling because you feel like you just see a different side of you. Um, so yeah, by developing that confidence, I just learned how to go outside the box and I really feel like I pushed my limits and it's helped along the way. I mean, I still got a long way to go, but, um, I think it's helped a lot. Yeah, for sure. And just like, just (laughs) being able to dive and all that and like feel confident that you're actually going to get there and get, get a guy out. Like confidence is huge in, in any sport, like you said, and just, being able to trust yourself to get to get to where you want to be and just get like be good positionally sound and just overall just feel like you're you're one of the best guys out there and like there's there's at your position there's nothing getting past you like that's 
definitely like trusting yourself and being confident in yourself as well. 100%. Yeah. So go like, we go into like mindset a little bit here. It's like, what, yeah. what would your mindset be like, like at, at, as you're, uh, when you're at shortstop, like what would you be thinking like on the pitch, like when a ball comes to you, like what would be some of the mindset things you would, you would uh, tell yourself from there? Yeah. So, I mean, kind of as a young age, I guess you could say, and so many coaches have said it, always expect the ball, you know, every play expect the ball. So you're not caught off guard or flat footed. So I took that into account and it's helped tremendously. But the biggest thing was just learning to be aggressive, but knowing when to lay back a little bit. So I would always just modify it down to two things. If the ball's hit a little softer, just be aggressive, go and get it. But when he smokes it, take that drop drop step and just take a step back and let it play, not play you, but let the ball come to you. You know what I mean? And just knowing those two things, I feel like it's helped me tremendously. It's made me make way less errors and be a much smarter fielder as well. Yeah, hundred percent there. And just being able to read the ball coming off the bat is huge. And like, especially like that drop step, like if it's, if it's creamed at you, smoked at you just drop back low. And then like, obviously if it's a little dribbler, you got to charge it. Like mm-hmm. everyone in little league always says like, always creep in like every pitch like yeah that, it's, that's it's almost like yeah it's like that prep step that they do I, I have a little I'll walk up I'll do a one two I'll go right foot left foot then I'll hop up and it just keeps me moving because by the time he makes contact I'm just coming down so I'm able to either move left right back forward and it's just able to keep me moving the whole time yeah exactly <laughs> so then going into like the worst possible thing you want is just and is you create you commit an error it's so like, what would your mindset be to help you settle back in? Because if you don't settle back in, you're going to be making a hell of a lot of errors that in that inning in that game. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, I kind of compare that to hitting almost. It's when you strike out or you get out, you can't think about it like, damn, like, I'm terrible now. I messed up. The team's going to hate me. Like, yeah, you did it, but just be ready for the next step at the next ground ball, the next fly ball, you just got to be ready to make a play. And that's when you're going to get your team back. You can't really go around saying, oh, I'm sorry, dude. You just make up for it in your actions. And that's really going to, that's really it, honestly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And just the same thing for hockey too. Like I'm a goalie and like mm-hmm. you, you let a shot in, like if you get down yourself, like of course you don't know. They're going to come back and bury you. And then, but like you just got to say to yourself, just stop the next puck, stop the next puck, stop the next shot. And like focus on the, those little like positive like words to like help keep you motivated and help keep you like on top of your game. Cause once you fall back, like there's nothing going back from that. Yeah. And it's, you can't really dwell on the past cause it's the past. You can't change it, but you can change the future and the present. So that's the way I look at it too. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent there. So then you go into playing high school ball with, uh, with some of the eighth graders that you were, that you just went undefeated with. It's like, what was your experience with high school ball and throughout like every year you played and some of the, like the things that you learned through high school ball and like getting to those higher level competitions. Yeah. So high school ball is actually a funny story. I I think you'll like this one. So, so going into, I wasn't in the best shape my eighth grade year and I really wanted to get into working out because I was around 14 yeah, I was 14 years old, and I said, all right, I'm, I'm old enough to start lifting a little bit of weight, um, start getting re- really into shape and everything. So I started to work out, and I went to the field literally every day in the summer. I, I didn't have a job, so I went from the field from about 9 a.m. to when it got dark. And I'm not even kidding. When I say I didn't eat, I didn't eat at all. Like, I just went and worked out in the morning, and then I went to the field. And that's when I started to play shortstop. That's when I learned all all the qualities that – I felt like I needed to have in order to play there. So I did that. And it's my ninth grade year, my freshman year in high school now. And tryouts come around. And it was warm that year. So we went outside for tryouts. And I go to shortstop. Everybody looks at me. I'm trying out for the JV team because I got invited with a few other kids. And they're like, dude, what are you doing at shortstop? I'm like, dude, I've been practicing. They're like, no way. So I start playing, I make the JV team, and I'm the starting shortstop. We 
played one game. I did terrible. Like when I say terrible, I had 102 fever. I went 0 for 4. See, I remember this like it was yesterday. I went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts, a ground out, mm-hmm. and I made two errors. I mean, it was the worst possible day I could have had. And the next day in practice were we have inner squads, JV versus varsity. And the varsity shortstop was a really good outfielder, but he was playing shortstop at the time because they didn't have an, another guy to play shortstop. That was really going to be solid for him. So we're inner squad in them. I did really well. And their varsity head coach has been looking at me for a while. And he asked a few of the captains, what do you think we should do? Should we pull him up or keep him down? And they go, if he's going to help us win, let's pull him up. So the next thing I know, I'm in the locker room, getting my locker and jersey for varsity. All I'm thinking is, why'd they choose me? I just went 0 for 4 with two errors. Like, it was the worst game of my life. And the coach says, look, we, we see potential in you. We need another shortstop. So would you would you like to play for us? And I'm like, dude, I would love to. <laughs> so I'm literally, I'm tearing up. I call I call my dad first, then I call my mom. And I'm like, I just got pulled to varsity. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah. So. I did pretty well my freshman year, but that was when I started to get my confidence even more. Just like in the playing field, I'm like, all right, I'm 14 years old. I'm playing on the varsity team with these 17, 18-year-olds, kids that are committed to college, a few D1 kids that were going there next year. I'm like, can I keep up with them? I'm like, like, I think I could really do this. So that's when the things started to turn for me. Yeah, that's that's a crazy story. Talk talk about opportunity. You had a terrible game your first game in JV and then you come back to uh, the inner squad game and you get called up to varsity like talk talk about like the opportunity that you got and just how how thankful you are for that and just how you were able to keep keep it rolling keep keep it keep it hot when you were when you're like probably flowing overflowing with confidence there yeah so honestly I just feel like opportunity comes from just not dwelling on what you did in the past good or bad Um, but just focusing on being the best that you could be in the future and the present. Um, And that's kind of what I did there. I wasn't dwelling too much on what I did in the past because there must've been something that I did right. The way I might've carried myself or um, something that he just saw in me that he liked. So I just feel like there's always coaches, not not looking at how you do, but how you present yourself and how you act. Um, But my confidence was, was pretty high. I, I had to calm down. <laughs> I had to relax, not overthink and everything. I couldn't get in my head too much because, you know, I'm, I'm still a freshman. I have to play baseball. And I was pretty nervous, honestly, going into that, that rest of that freshman year. I remember the first game that I played on varsity, I went two for two with like two singles. Um, and I made no errors. I think I made like three plays in the field. So I was feeling good. We had like three games the rest of the week. And by the end of the week, I calculated my average for varsity. And I was hitting like 600. So that's when my head got Not, not a bad average there. No, it's, it's, it's not bad at all. Um, my head started to get way too big. I was like, oh, I'm the man. And then all of a sudden, I started to not do well. So it kind of staggered on top of each other. And I ended up batting like 200 for my freshman year of high school. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's when I realized like you got to take it day by day, like – at bat by at bat you got to relax just focus on what you can focus on yeah exactly and just focus on the present <clears throat> right right then and there and don't focus on like the future bat bats like what you're gonna do in the field just focus it right then and there mm-hmm. yeah so then you went you go into your sophomore junior senior year like how how is all how are those years for you and just did you have to did you like struggle a bit, like going in your sophomore year and a junior, like whatever year and like, how'd you overcome it? Yeah. So I was, I kind of put that in the past and I was focused on, like I said, before the future. And I was just continuing to try to work on my craft, get better each day. And the recruiting process is starting to come up now. So I'm getting pretty nervous. I'm like, <clears throat> like, I want to go to a division one school. I want to play at UNC Vanderbilt. Like I wanted to go to these places. and I never really played down south much. So we started to go to showcases up in the northeast, and I was getting a few looks uh, from some northeast schools, Division One schools. And that's when I was getting excited. I was like, oh, I think I could really get some interest from D1 schools. So I kept playing uh, my sophomore year. I did well. 
Um, didn't really have too many issues because, um, I mean, you know, baseball, you're not going to get a hit every time. Yeah. Three out of ten, you're amazing. It'd be awesome but, if you got a hit every game, but that's not really Yeah, <laughs> we, we would love that. Um, but, yeah, sophomore year was good. It, I was very consistent. And then that summer was huge because that's the summer that I wasn't aiming to commit, but I would have liked to receive a few offers. So I didn't get any offers during the summer, but I kept, you know, working everything, went to showcases. But that fall of my junior year, that's when I started to get some offers. And I was looking at schools. And then Maris came up to me. They offered me. Visited the campus, saw the coaching staff, fell in love with everything about it. All the coaches were amazing. Facilities were great. I mean, now they're even better. We just updated it. But I was like, I think this is the place I want to be because it felt like home. Like, if I can give advice to anybody, that's the biggest thing is wherever you go to visit, if it feels like home, that should be the place that you go to, not based on the name of the place or really anything else. But look at price, of course. But <laughs> um, but just make sure it feels like home, and that's what I felt. So I decided to commit there, and that's when really all the pressure released. That's when I realized, like, now I can go out and play. I don't have to worry about committing to college. I just have to get my good grades and go to school and play baseball. So yeah. my junior, I did very well. And our senior year, we actually won a, uh, a section championship and a regional championship. We lost in the state final four. Yeah. So how, what, what was that experience like going, going to playoffs and just being, being successful and then, but eventually losing, but like take us through like what you guys learned, what you learned from all the, from that experience and playing like the, in playoff baseball and higher level competition. Yeah, so once we went into playoffs, there was like a whole different vibe. The years prior, my junior year, freshman year, and sophomore year, we always made it um, past the first round but lost in the second. But there was always a vibe of like a timidness or a uh, just a nervousness with it that like, oh, I don't want to lose. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then senior year, all of a sudden, we could have been playing the Yankees. We didn't care. Like, not to that extent, but you know what I mean? Like, we, we didn't care who we were playing. We were just yeah. going to roll over anybody and find a way to win. We were just that type of team with type of guys and attitude. And it was just amazing. Like, going into the game, we didn't worry about – like, we would make bets with each other. Like, me and uh, me and our second baseman, his name is Kenny. He's at Canisius now. We would make bets with each other. Like, who's going to hit the ball the farthest this game? That's confidence right there. Yeah, like, it was funny. We were like, dude, I'll give you 10 bucks if you hit it over that right fielder's head. So, like, there was one game where it was the second round of the playoffs. And I go up to him, like, dude, if you had a walk-off right here, I'll give you 10 bucks. I'm not even kidding you. He had a walk-off. It sounds like a crazy story, but he had a walk-off. It was just that kind of that kind of year. So, we obviously kept winning, kept winning, went to the um, semifinals. And we lost against – this team called Ketchum and luckily they changed the rules that year to double elimination. So we were still alive and we win the other semifinal game. So now we're in the championship game, but we have to beat them twice. They can only beat us once. We ended up beating them twice and we won. So it was, it was just an amazing feeling. Like that's, that's the feeling that I want to have again, hopefully this coming year with Maris. Cause I feel like we could do it. With that, just yeah. that same vibe of whoever we play, we're gonna win. We don't care. Yeah, what what a story! And you love being on those teams where it's like you could just you know you're gonna you're gonna be battling every day and you're gonna be winning and rolling right through these teams and just the vibe is so different when you know you're gonna be, do that and just it's all it's a whole lot of confidence in your team as well and just the camaraderie camaraderie of of everyone on on the bench and your team as well. Definitely. Yeah, so then – so before we get into college a little bit here, uh, yeah. what has been some of your favorite high school memories from co from high school baseball? That's a good one. Um, honestly, <clears throat> there's one that stands out, which is the obvious, winning a section championship because we won that in 2019, and the last time that it was won from suffering was 1999, so it was exactly 20 years. <clears throat> I mean, it couldn't be perfect better planned right exactly. i mean 20 yeah. years later we win a championship but um just all around memories was just the bond with those guys 
like I feel like it's never going to go away either. Like we still we obviously work out together, all the guys that play ball still. Um, and it's just like we pick up where we left off every time. Like it's just that bond, that brother nature that we have, and it's just amazing. Yeah, that's that's awesome. You you love to hear those stories and just be around all those guys. So then you go into college. You're uh, your freshman year, so last year before like COVID and all that hit. So like, what what was that experience like of just being able to play baseball at the at the collegiate level, and like the things the transition from college for from high school to playing college. Yeah, so I mean, especially at the Division One level, I felt like things started to speed up on me a little bit. Um, but I'll start with the fall season, kind of. So when I went in there, they had a shortstop that just graduated. And I was competing with, I think, two other guys at shortstop. Um, and we did a bunch of scrimmages, like I said before. We played Holy Cross. I got to play the whole game at Holy Cross at short. Um, I, I think I did well there. I went like three for four. Um, made a player or two at short. So I was feeling really comfortable. And the whole fall, I think I did pretty well. And by the time you know it, the season's rolling around. Um, we're opening up at University of South Florida. And, you know, I'm a freshman, so I I always set the expectations high for myself, but I don't try to get over my head. So I go into the game, and I look at the lineup card, and I see, boom, 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 batting eighth, playing shortstop. My name's there. I'm like, wow. I mean, it's don't get me wrong. It's not like 30,000 people at the stadium. There's probably like a good – maybe 1,000, 2,000 people. It's still a good amount. We're opening up at South Florida that Friday night at 7. Never forget it. Um, so I'm out there. I'm, I'm pretty nervous. I mean, it's my first college game. I'm a freshman. We're opening up at a university. I mean, in Florida. I mean, <laughs> it's awesome. Couldn't be better. And Couldn't be better. So I remember the first inning, I think it was they got our picture, our, our guy Alex, he shoves. Disgusting changeup. But shoves. Uh, struck the first guy out and then he walks the second guy so then all of a sudden this guy hits a little chopper in between the mound and first our pitcher runs over to get it throws it to me I had to pick it out so I picked in through the first return of double play so that was my first like real play in a college game so I'm thinking to myself after like obviously not during it but after I'm like if I miss that ball wow <laughs> I don't know what would have happened but I remember thinking to myself, I think it was around the eighth inning, we we're winning four to two. I was like, this is a much longer game than high school. I mean, seven to nine is doesn't seem like a lot, but it is. Now the next thing you know, they score two runs in the ninth and we're four four. And the next thing I know, we're giving each other high fives. We just played twelve innings and we won on our opening night. I'm like, geez. I mean, that was just an experience in itself. Yeah. Plus I was able to pick up my first college hit that game, so that was always nice. That that's always good and just Playing 12, 12, 12 innings, your your first college game that that must have been must have been a night. And just how how did you feel after that game after playing twelve innings? Honestly, I I was I was definitely fatigued. Um, I went back to my room, just kind of chilled out, went to sleep. I think we had a game the next day around five, so we had a good a time, good amount of time to sleep. Um, but yeah, I was definitely definitely jacked up. So excited. Yeah, for sure, and especially when you're when you're jacked up after games like that, I bet it's really hard to sleep. Like I know I have that problem. Uh, so like, what was what was the sleep schedule like uh, after that game? And just being not probably not being able to fall asleep after that adrenaline rush. Yeah, honestly, thankfully I think because of the twelve innings I was, <laughs> so uh, so I went back to the hotel. Kind of we had a little food, and then went up to a room. We kind of hung out for a little while. And then, thankfully, I fell right asleep. I don't know how, but I fell right asleep. I was probably so – the adrenaline probably kicked off by then. But, um, but yeah, I fell asleep, and then we woke up the next day to play the another game. Unfortunately, we lost. Um, we lost the whole series, actually. We lost Saturday and Sunday. But, I mean, it was definitely a, a great experience to uh, to start all three games and the rest of the year, really. I mean, we played 12 games. I started all 12. Yeah, for sure. So, so like you said, you played twelve games. You hit four RBIs, four hits, two doubles, three runs scored. So, what do you think helped uh, contribute to 
how much success you've you had your freshman year considering you guys only played 12 games yeah I mean when you look at it I'm sure a lot of people will see like on the on the stat board it was like four for 42 I mean that was if you want to talk about a guy that went from up here to I mean not even up here to down here but just mentally from at the top to the bottom that that was literally me I mean I was so freaked out stressed out I I went through it felt like hell when I was going through I was looking at the numbers and I was just so caught up in the numbers like oh damn I'm only four for 20 I gotta get a hit today like that that's literally what I was thinking about I was like, I got to get my next hit so I can just get it out of the way. I got to do this. I got to do that. Um, And don't get me wrong. I did have success. Um, I did feel good, but I was just driving myself crazy in the, in the mental aspect of the game. Yeah. I, I just feel like, of course, numbers matter, but like, you sometimes can't dwell on what your numbers are. You just got to keep playing the game. Like, like we said earlier, just stay in the moment, just, focus on just hitting the ball, fielding the ball, like whatever you're doing at that moment. It's like, what, what would your mindset be like during that time? And just like trying to like re refocus yourself and just try to stay in the moment when, when it it's hard. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some, some things that I'm going to incorporate into my game in the future. Cause you know, we all have things to learn, but the biggest thing with me is just, learning to think less and not care less, but just relax. You know what I mean? Just, just play the game, enjoy it and, and let things happen. Cause I was trying to force so many things. Like that's why I was getting so stressed because I was, I was like, I got to get a hit here instead of going up to the plate with a plan and just trusting myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And hundred yeah, percent. And I, I'm kind of, I know this may sound weird, but in a way I'm kind of glad it happened. You know what I mean? Like yeah. going through that struggle. Let's get hopefully um, get it out of the way. Yeah. yeah, and like just to be able to learn from that. Well, hopefully learn from that. I think yeah. I did, mm-hmm. and I will. <laughs> um, but being able to learn from that and just building off that, uh, it's it's definitely gonna help because the way I look at it, it's like I was down here, and this is how I was feeling then, to as where I want to be here, and this is how I gotta think. You know what I mean? So it's kind of yeah. just. I feel like the best way to learn is from yourself, like from your past experiences. Yeah, hundred percent agree with you there. Like the experiences are are worth it, no matter if it's good or bad. Like you learn from everything, so it's yeah. good that you got you hopefully got that out of the way, and like you know what to do when if that does ever happen again. So yeah. then, then you go into the season, you play twelve games, and then boom, COVID hits. Like what what was happening leading up to the events of covid and like were you guys like practicing like did practices get canceled like for the day there and then you guys were unclear of what was going on like what happened over there yeah so the craziest part was we were we woke up around what was it four in the morning yeah we woke up four in the morning i remember crushing french toast sticks love those um crushed some breakfast in the morning then we went on the bus and I was like, damn, this is pretty early. We're on our way to Florida. We're going to, I think we're playing Florida Atlantic and Florida Gulf Coast. We're going to be there for the whole spring break for a week. I mean, just imagine that in Florida for a week playing baseball on spring break. Can't get better than that. Really I was can. like, this is going to be a, this could be a dream come true. Um, so we get in the airport, we check in everything, check our bags. Uh, we get breakfast again <laughs> and we're sitting down we're about to board our flight in literally five minutes. All of a sudden we get a call. Our head coach gets a call from the athletic administration and they go, look, you guys got to come back. We canceled your flight. We got the money back. Um, There was outbreaks of COVID on that plane coming back. So you guys can't go. So we're like, all right, we're figuring, yeah, we'll come back. We'll, you know, we'll just wait this week off, cancel it and then go into conference play. We're going to start conference the next week. And, The next thing you know, we get back to school, classes are canceled. We're like, what's going on? So we all go to our locker room. We get further notice that we're shut down for three days. So we're just hanging out in the locker room and everything. And I think about two hours later, coach comes down like, he looks like he's crying. I was like, what's wrong? And he gives us the news. Next thing I know, we're all crying because we thought it was like, 
we didn't know what was going to happen. All we knew is that our season just got canceled, schools canceled. We might not see our seniors again. We didn't even get to finish their last games. Um, so we're in that boat, and there's just a flow of emotions going on. Um, but at least I think it was like two weeks later, the NCAA came out with like guys can come back. So that kind of calmed things down. And things kind of picked up from there. <clears throat> um, we realized we're going to be stacked this year. We have guys coming back. We have transfers coming in, elite freshmen coming in. And we're even more excited. So we kind of look at it not as a blessing, but we we definitely used it to our advantage in this case. Yeah, for sure. And just <clears throat> it sucks for, like, all the seniors beside before, like, getting all the – all, all everything that they can come back and, and just like the same thing happened for us like we're just waiting for practice at on a Saturday morning and then our coach comes in gives us the news and like it's it's a flow of emotion from there and like some of the seniors are crying which is really hard to see because they put in a, sh- a shit ton of work and everything and then they just cancel like that but then like everything brightened up a bit after like seniors are allowed to come back after next year after this or the following year so that was at least good to hear and it was just crazy that that time and just being there in the moment at that time when the ncaa canceled like all all sports like it was that was that was a weird time definitely yeah emotional time too yeah 100 (laughs) percent. yeah 100 percent. so then so like what are have you heard about anything about like for this season, like what's going to be happening or like, I know you have a lot of like good players coming back and transfers, like you just said, like, but like, is there, have you heard anything about like if the season's going to happen or not yet? Yeah. So I think we will. Uh, there was talks about us going conference play only doing like games on the weekends, maybe a few midweeks, but um, there, I don't think anything's set in stone yet, but that's, if I had to guess, that's what it's going to look like. So we're going to stay in conference. I think the rest of Division One schools are going to stay in conference. And not to get ahead of anything, but I'm hoping that by the time, God willing, we're playing and we finish playing, which will be around May, we each have our conference tournaments. Things will calm down, and hopefully we can go into regional play. You know what I mean? So, like, kind of yeah. get, get it in that way and maybe have the um, – playoffs going in that direction but that'd be awesome yeah and hopefully have some sort of a normalcy after and like everything calms down and just and just you guys be able to have playoffs and everything as well and just everything just calms down yeah definitely yeah so do you have any expectations going this year are you are you like i have no freaking clue yeah so personally for me so last year I set all these personal goals. Like I want to hit this. I want to feel that like specific, like, yeah, you want to do well for yourself. But the years that I've done the best and you can't really f- force this on anybody. Cause you have to care for the team. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is when I've just wanted to win. I don't care if we're going to win when I'm not playing, which I would would like to not to think that that wouldn't happen. But, yeah. um, if, if that's the best thing for the team, then I want to do it to win. Like, literally, my senior year, that's how I thought. Like, if the, if you have a better shortstop coming in, like, let them play. I want to win. And that's when I did my best. But you have to care for the team to do that. And I can honestly say, like, this year, like, I feel that same way. Like, I love these guys. It's a great atmosphere. Um, just a great bond, honestly, that I love. <laughs> and I'll do anything for them to win a championship. So whether that's, you know, obviously I'd love to be playing, uh, me playing short, me playing second, outfield, um, anything that we can do to win, that's how I want to win. And that's how I want to play. So that's really my expectation for this year is just just to win, go out there and play my hardest. Yeah, for sure. And huge, huge team guy and just shows how the how like the camaraderie you guys have is just really, it's just really high and it's really there. So it's always good to see and hear about those, those, uh, those, that chemistry that uh, teammates and teams have. Definitely. You, you can't beat it. Honestly, it's a, it's almost like a one in a lifetime feeling. <laughs> exactly. hundred percent. So Dylan, I have a few more questions for you. Yeah. So, uh, 
what what's your favorite pump up song before games and then what's your walk up song oh uh, dude so i'm a huge gunna fan you know gunna i hope yeah yeah he, he's the man but that's my walk up song is uh speed it up by gunna that, it, that's, that's it, a good different. song yeah it goes hard but um a pop a pump up song would be honestly my boy jack harlow what's popping the remix though oh my god yeah that, that's definitely fire it's a great song yeah absolutely those are those are great picks uh what's your favorite sports drink Oof, that's a good question honestly i was a huge gatorade guy when i was little but um i what did i have it was recently it was like an off-branded gatorade it was called maybe g something g2 yeah probably probably something like that yeah Yeah, i'm sorry but but body armor is good too that's up there but yeah i love body armor oh yeah me too how about you what's your favorite body armor for sure like i'll I'll have like two to three of those a day and like this along with water of course but yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) you can't you can't get enough of body armor like what's your your favorite flavor Uh, i gotta go the fruit punch honestly that they have good the mango is good too yeah that fruit punch is top three i think the peach mango is my favorite then the orange whatever the whatever the orange one is called and then fruit punch yeah yeah hell yeah you put it on uh, you you put it in your gatorade bottle above the uh above the net oh yeah all the time (laughs) all the time that's just that's a secret sauce right there let's go yeah so uh what's been your favorite college memory so far um unfortunately you know, it hasn't been a long time because I'm sure I would have had way more if we played the season. But going down to Florida that opening night, you know, just my personal um, my personal achievements that came from that game, my first college hit, my first college start was amazing. But just going down there to beat them on opening night was just an amazing experience. That's yeah. got to be my favorite so far. Yeah, that that's unreal. That's a great way to end this. So, uh, Dylan, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time. I want to wish you nothing but the best of luck going forward in, into the next season. And this was this was a blast. Hey, it was awesome. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I can say the same for you. Good luck this season. Hope you guys get it in. Thank you. And uh, hope to stay in touch soon, my man. Yeah, absolutely.